Hello there, YouTube. I figured I'd better post this video. The reason I haven't made any late videos because I had a breakdown. First, the motor burned up. I'll maybe put some pictures at the end of what it did. It fried one of the brushes. Uh, I talked to several places, their advice and everything. I know there's a cheaper lathe where they say that uh, here's your control right here. When you turn this on, the speed control has to be turned down. You put too much voltage and the motor can burn it up. Well, I've followed the instructions what they say. And they're really not as clear as they should be, anything in the book. But, we got a motor. Well, then we got another belt because it was chewing up the belt too. And it locked up, spun the belt off inside the cover. Well, this is the second belt. You can see what happened. Just disintegrated. It is ribbed on both sides. And I took it in the place they swore I was taking, brought in something off an RC toy car or vacuum cleaner or something. They were trying not to snicker. <laughs> I was told what this came on. And if I remember right, he did go look up, watch one of my videos later on. Uh, just disintegrated. It finally broke me carrying around and everything, hanging up, whatever. It had one little thread, so we measured it the best we could. <clears throat> this measured 16 and a half inches, standard measurement, and like 3 sixteenths wide. Well, this is what we came up with. This is 17, but it's quarter inch wide. I'll pause this here. It's like for equipment of 3 to 17 horsepower, that's an industry number. It's quarter inch by 17 inches, 6 millimeter wide by 430 millimeters long. Okay, that's the best we could come up with because there was a 16 or a 17, and we went with the 17 because I figure it's wider. If I had to modify the machine, oh well. I mean, I'm down to what are you going to do? Either that or send it back and give up. Well, we didn't give up. We're going to start this and show. You'll see at a slow speed it gets floppy down here. Here's the tension. This is slotted like this, up and down. We're at the top of the slot. On the back of the motor is a piece of foam on there where this would rest against the board or the desk. This is the same as the board that it came on. Well, this ain't quite touching it. You can kind of wiggle the motor a little bit. We don't want to break the bolts. These are very small bolts that go through the whole motor itself. So, we don't want to try to put anything under here to try to tighten it up like that because it's not touching the desk. The advice I got was let the belt run floppy as long as it grabs. It would be better for the belt to slip, fly off or something, and put a load on the motor because there's not a bearing that's a pushing. Same with the sewing machine motor, only it's DC. Uh, some sewing machine motors were DC, so if you change the wires, it'll go the opposite direction. But we're going to start it up here. First, you turn on your power. A little bit of a hum. I don't wait too long to get it going. I'll try to zoom in so I can show you how floppy it looks like at a slow speed down here. Then we'll speed up. That's about half speed. That's full speed. There's not a whole lot of difference when you listen to it. There's about where I'd probably run it. If you go down here, things kind of labor. Full speed. Back about half speed. We'll zoom out. Okay. Now the motor is turning this way. The pulley. So... As long as this is tighter than the back is floppy, then we know we're getting what I call grip traction. We know we're not slipping. It's going to be a little floppy as long as this looks tighter than here. That's how I'd do on a car. Okay, so we're really not going to tighten the belt up on this. If it acts like it wants to slip, then I'll have to tighten it. But we'd rather have this belt floppy so we don't wear out the bushing in the motor or overheat the bearings or something up there. Because heat transfers, if you put a load up here, you'll heat the bearing up. Even though it's fun, you'll still heat that bearing up behind there. I can show you with the bearing. There ain't much bearing, you know. They're, they don't. They're not much probably for quality either. But you see how it rides up out of the groove. It is a little wider. It's better than down in the bottom. Okay, this belt was riding in the bottom of the pulley on the motor. I looked at it several times. When it was brand new, it was hitting the bottom of that pulley. The 
Bottom of that pulley is not bead like you think it is. It's flatted at the bottom. I can get down and give you a close up, but trust me, it's more flatted on the bottom there than it is bead shaped like the top pulley. Okay? So this belt wears, it's always going to be in a V. This is not an actual V down there. Don't worry about my finger because I'm way out here away. Just looks like it on camera. That's not V. That is pretty wide down at the bottom, and that's where this belt was riding. It slipped, labor, everything, and you'd speed up. When I put the new belt, new motor on, you'd speed it up, and the motor would speed up, and the lathes wouldn't go any faster. I didn't have a tachometer on it, but I can eyeball, and I can hear, and I can watch. So this was not speeding up up here. If this was running faster and the belt would start slipping. Well, then when I tried to run it on a slower speed, you couldn't take the slack out of this because if you tried to take the slack out by tightening it, this stuff stretches like a rubber band when it gets hot. I'm stretching it right now and it's cold and laying around. When I had to try, I'd stop it, I'd take the belt off, it'd feel like a rubber band. There is threads going through this belt, but it's junk. Garbage. It ain't going to do me no good to save it and look at it. But this is what we got for it. Uh, I think these are assembled in Mexico now. Gates out of Denver, Colorado. I looked up the specs on it once. Gates Corporation. I think it says on the belt, Mexico. True flex. What's this? That's called the industry number. You can always pause on this. I think I said the measurements already. There is the part number. For future reference, for me too, but I did buy an extra. We have two of them. They were eight bucks a piece. Uh, with time and paid shipping, they're like five dollars a piece. Time and paid the shipping freight to ship to the company. I picked them up out the door. Sixteen dollars and some change for both belts. Well, with all the headache I went through, I can gladly pay that. Because there's full speed. I'll try to get the camera so you can see both. I would never run it down here. That's laboring. You don't know what kind of work you do even on soft metal and play. That's that'd be late. That's pretty slow. Okay, we'll take the camera off here and we'll try to show this pulley. But it's not bead like you think it would be. It's more flat down in there. And that's where that little belt was going. 3 16 wide. You see how much that sticks out. We'll play with the zoom here a little bit. It does stick out. This camera strap out of there. We wrap around something. This pulley is like cast iron. It is porous looking. Okay? It was making that other plastic belt turn black. I had everything cleaned with cleaners. Nothing was dirty. It was making it black. You would see the metal powder off of the pulley. In fact, I will pause and have a shot or a couple of pictures of what the pulley looks like. I'll put a, shoot a couple of pictures of what that looks like, how porous it looks. It has been making this belt shiny. We've probably got about an hour now running this. We run this for a long time. Got it pretty warm out in the shop. We got it all warmed up out here. Everything's warm. I have my heater on everything. Don't I don't run stuff when it's cool. The weather's been nice. So it's been out of where it's not been cold. It hasn't been freezing, low zero, come out and start the machine or nothing. But I guess that about covers it. Said I will include some pictures of the motor. That is a cover. Otherwise it looks just like a sewing machine motor. That is just a big plastic cover. That's how it's told to turn off. You hear that hum? I wouldn't want to let it set it hum very long. When I turn this on, get the thing going. I can let that set there and hum. Uh. 
Okay, I don't think that'll pick that up, but it does have numbers on it. True Flex, Maine, Mexico, shows whatever no other numbers and stuff on it. But this pulley does unscrew. But I will include pictures of what that pulley looks like, how it's not a machine smooth metal, it is porous. And I'll include a couple of pictures of what this looks like so far on the side of the belt. And I'll get another close up of this. So, thanks for watching. I know this may be a long video, but it'll be good for future reference for me and if anybody has this problem with this model of lathe.